Welcome to my video. Just to let you know, I have no financial interest. To get new educational videos and updates, please subscribe to my channel. I'd be very grateful if you could please like and share this video, which I hope will give you a beneficial knowledge. <laughs> The story starts from the atom. It consists of neutrons and protons with electrons around it and it is in a state of stability. In 1896, Henri Becquerel, who is a French physicist, discovered the radioactivity. He discovered it in a special element called uranium and he found that the atoms of uranium are not in state of stability and they are unstable so they are releasing energy all the time to come to their stable state or ground state. So, these are the signs of a radioactive material and you have to take care of this sign uh, not to come near of this material. Um, so, this is in short the radioactivity. In 1899, a British chemist, Ernest Rutherford, have classified the types of radiation into three types according to their penetration of material. So we have the alpha waves or alpha radiation and the beta radiation and the gamma radiation. So the alpha radiation it stops at the surface of any tissue. The beta radiation can be stopped by aluminum or plastic shields and the gamma radiation can be stopped by lead. The source of the beta radiation is different but one of the commonest metals or elements that is radiating beta radiation is strontium 90 which is consisting of a metallic element and it, it it is formed of uranium and plutonium together so this is the most common source of beta radiation in medicine although there is other elements. What is ionization? So ionization means this radioactive substance is emitting this radiation on another atoms and these atoms will have their electrons to be distorted and to get more energy so this atoms has to re release this energy and when it releases this energy it is in state of ionization because it is not in the stable state and it is damaged so the beta radiation is stopped by thick layers of clothing or by quarter inch of aluminium or plastic. This is our probe that is used in delivering beta radiation in ophthalmology and it has this plastic shield and this is the emitter here of strontium 90. It is kept in a lead protective box 
and it has different sleeves according to the uses and this is the sign of radioactivity the parts of the applicator is the emitter which has the strontium 90 which is put topically on the part that we need to treat with beta radiation this is the Prespex shield which protects us from any unnecessary radiation and this is the handle how does it work it actually makes damage to the fibroblasts in the conjunctiva or in the tissue that we want to stop the activity in and this will make damage to the fibroblast or at least stop the metabolic activity and growth so this is simply how it is working the range of the radiation is from three millimeters to one centimeter in water which is in any tissue in the body so the radiation has a certain limit and it's attenuated by 50 percent after penetration of 1.5 millimeters in water <laughs> After trigem excision is three sessions one minute each so it is about one minute to give us around 5,000 to 6,000 reds in total and it is better to start at the day of trigem excision because the previous studies shows that starting early will help reduce the rate of the recurrence and then we do another session on the first post-operative day then another one on the second post-operative day after the trigem excision the post-operative care which is very important to avoid scleral dryness and melting is to cover the eye for one week and to use frequent lubricants and eye gels every hour or every two hours together with topical antibiotic ointment three times per day for one week this is our case here pre-operative picture on the left hand side and the post-operative picture after eight weeks the side effects of the beta irradiation is very rare but it can have some conjunctival telangiectasia or scleral thinning necrosis and melting or very rarely you might have lens opacity the uses of beta irradiation in ophthalmology are 
first as an adjuvant after tritium excision, which reduces the recurrence rate significantly as shown in this video. Although this is not my preferred technique at the present time, as I discussed before in my previous videos, my preferred technique is conjunctival autograft or stem cell graft. Um, although there are some studies in this area at the present time, in treatment of resistant Werner conjunctivitis, especially palpebral spring catar, we we can use this applicator but in a different course for six sessions and this after shaving of the resistant eyelid papillae. Treatment of corneal neovascularization as an adjuvant in subscleral trabeculectomy during the trabeculectomy clip operation and in treatment of ocular surface neoplasia, in some benign eyelid neoplasia as well, and in treatment of wet age-related macular degeneration, but different applicator and different source as ruthenium brachytherapy. I would like to thank Professor Dr. Saad Rashad, Professor of Ophthalmology in Shams University, Cairo, Egypt, for his great contribution in the field of beta radiation and various studies and papers. Thank you for watching.